right, and we'll just wait for it to come up on Twitch. Perfect. All right. Take it away, Madeline. All right. Welcome to another edition of a uh, community pairing from our core team today. Uh, Gatsby member Blaine will be pairing with community member Alex on converting part of our CLI to TypeScript. Uh, this one is uh, gets into some complex types. So uh, Alex opened this PR, which I am dropping in chat right now. And uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, sh uh, so you should see this on your screen. Um, so I'm Alex. I'm actually, uh, it's one of my first contributions to Gatsby. And they turn turned out to be quite a challenging piece of code. So uh, I'm quite excited to be able to work with someone experienced on it and uh, make this PR better and uh, make the code base better. So um, I'm going to maybe tell a bit about this PR. Um, so I was rewriting to TypeScript one of, uh, one of I guess, one of the main files in uh, GetBCLI CLI package. Um, it's called create CLI JS. It used to be create CLI JS. Now it's create CLI TS, obviously. And um, um, so I managed, I guess, to cover basic stuff um, like giving types to functions and you know uh, all of uh, all of the obvious stuff. But there are some more difficult issues with it um, that I guess play maybe help me figure out. So you can find this PR. It's, um, I guess it's here and uh, the link is also in the comments. Um, so yeah, um, I guess I'm going to show you uh, the difference between the two files. It's open in my in my editor, um, and um, we can I guess really go through all the changes real quick. Yeah. Um, so the first thing I did I re renamed create CLI JS into create CLI TS and changed all the requires to imports, as you can see here. And um, I also found this in its starter. It, it wasn't uh, required on top of a file, but it was actually a dyna dynamic require right here. So, but uh, I don't see why it's here. And uh, uh, it, no it makes no difference whatsoever. And uh, because we can import it, uh, we can actually see, you know, the real uh, function signature here, and it makes our code uh, more safe. Uh, so I guess we should start from the main export. Um, it used to be here. Uh, so uh, previously, it was like a default export. I changed it to a named one. So now the function has a name. and. Uh, you know, generally, it's um, it's better when you refactor thing, things, and uh, uh, I guess uh, the whole new code base of Gatsby uses this convention. So uh, I think um, default experts are not widely used, at least. Uh, so it's a function that accepts an uh, RGB. Uh, so it's argument vector. It's an array of strings. And um, uh, here are a couple of main changes. Um, this Yarks function, it used to um, had no arguments. But as you can see, um, the compi compiler, compiler says it should, it should have some. Um, it used to work because uh, implicitly, as I discovered, it uses um, this node variable uh, like process arguments. 
and uh, I changed it so it accepts the arguments we passed uh, explicitly. It's, I guess, more clear and uh, we have no problems with the compiler. Um, yeah, so I already mentioned this, that I moved uh, this require to the top of the file. And um, a couple of minor changes, like uh, it used to be um, yeah, this command argument, it used to be a short version of describe, uh, but as you can see, um, the type definitions, uh, they don't have this. They don't have this version. It might, it might work, so... Uh, Could that maybe come along with when you... Up, didn't you upgrade the Yargs uh, package? Um, like text major? Actually not. It, uh, it was upgraded recently, but it wasn't me. So it used to be like that. It used to be version 12. Right now it, it's version 15. Uh, but I don't think there are too many changes between those. And uh, I guess we can use the whole form, the full form of uh, this argument, no problem. So yeah. And here are a couple of changes like this as well. Uh, here we have one of the tricky parts that we, we might you know address today. Um, um this argument which is uh, the main yargs object and if you don't know yargs is a uh, is a library that helps you build um uh, like clis so console interfaces and uh, uh it's one of the main object and uh, here we use a function get commands and it looks like that it's private API. So it used internally and uh, uh, consumers like Gatsby were not supposed to use it, I guess. So it might be removed in future versions and this will break things. Um, I'm not sure how to solve this because um, uh, I couldn't find any you know, good way to do what this, this function does. So it, it obviously gets uh, all the commands it has. Uh, so all, all the things we declared here. Um, and uh, it seems like Yargs, we have quite a complex setup here. So we might not be able to um, give types proper types to every function and uh, without changing things a lot here. So I guess our goal today is to find some reasonable middle ground, you know, between ha having like a perfect, perfect TypeScript file and uh, not doing this th thing from like, like the ground up. So Here's one of the issues, and um, I'm gonna go th through other changes real quick. So, um, I guess it's uh, it's a good practice to give functions like explicit uh, signatures like this. So, uh, the compiler it, it can guess that this function, you know, if I remove this annotation it will still figure out that get version four returns the string. But you know, if you're human and if you are reading this code, uh, you might want to see uh, from the get-go what this function does. Uh, so a lot of the functions that are here, I gave them like explicit uh, type signatures. And here we have a bit more of describes It's a huge, it's a rather huge file as well. Uh, and uh, here is one of uh, tricky parts. Uh, we have this uh, <laughs> quite a complex uh, handler. Uh, and it receives arguments. 
um, which I'm not quite sure. Um, uh, it's an object and uh, its shape, it's, uh, it's defined by this builder. And um, so it's supposed to have uh, properties like host, port, open. And, uh, you know, I figured it from the context, but uh, it's kind of a silly type I gave it. Um, right now it's any. So it's not very helpful. And probably the main issue that we have is it's here. Um, so Gatsby CLI, it, um, um, if you use Gatsby, you know, it has commands like, uh, Gatsby build and, you know, Gatsby develop, uh, and a whole, a whole more of them, but, uh, the Gatsby CLI pa package it doesn't uh, um, it doesn't have them. So uh, all of those commands they come from just the Gatsby package, uh, and here we require them. So if you can, if you like, take a look here, uh, you can get general idea of what this code does. So uh, we look for a local Gatsby package. If we're inside some project, uh, it's going to resolve to a Gatsby package inside node modules. Um, so we don't have a problem like requiring, for example, if we have Gatsby installed globally, so we don't require it and we use uh, Gatsby that we have locally. Uh, but because it's not like a regular import, like once we have here, uh, because it's not bundled up and we do this dynamically. Uh, it's really uh, impossible to explain to TypeScript what we expect to have here. So when we require it initially, it's just any. It can be, it can be anything, really. We can put uh, anything uh, like in the commands folder and uh, uh, TypeScript compiler won't have any kind of way to figure out what this is. Um, so previously it was just like this uh, because we introduced TypeScript here. I've added this small, sm this really basic type check. So I'm just checking if it's a function or not. And, uh, you know, if, if it's not, we panic. Um, but it's about as far as uh, uh, <laughs> as far as it gets. So we can't really know the function signature, what uh, you know parameters it have, what it returns. Um, so it's quite challenging because uh, a lot of things that are going on in Create CLI, I actually. Um, um, are really connected to this logic and uh, currently I don't see a good way to to handle this situation and we're close to the end of the file so here about a couple of function signatures as well um, here it was kind of a weird function because it used to this version is actually a string and we convert it to number and uh, it could be an empty string or uh, like a, a semver string. Uh, so here we split it and we get the major version, which is uh, like the first element in the array. Uh, and this function used to return basically a number or an empty string, which is a really awkward type to have. So I changed it a little bit and now it returns number. And if uh, version is empty, it just returns undefined. So it's a bit you know, easier to reason about. And uh, here we have another change. Um, it used to be like this. 
So it used to be just an object with two fields. And here the compiler is kind of saying, you shouldn't be doing this because uh, this object it doesn't have this property. So I gave it just a basic kind of undefined placeholder. So I don't have to change as much code here and uh, the compiler is happy as well. Yeah, and um, basically all the problems that I've mentioned, I have outlined them here. So get commands that we saw uh, at the end of the file, it's private, but we still kind of have to use it. Uh, I don't see a, a way around it. Um, CLI options, uh, you know, the arguments that we pass here, I mean, there are any, and uh, I'm not sure how, how we can handle it. Yep. And, um, and yeah, because we import uh, functions using, you know, dyna dynamic imports, uh, dynamic requires, um, they are of type unknown. Uh, and yeah, cool. I think, it's, <laughs> I think I'm done. Yeah. No, it was a great walk to you. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was a great walk to you. Um, thanks for showing all that stuff. So yeah, I think you did a good job of highlighting some really tricky things. And if you, I think you said, you mentioned that like, there's not, there's probably not like a good way to go, go about specifically like the requiring of the functions from the Gatsby package. Uh, Yes, I think that like you were right on the head. This is like a really awkward position to be in as far as typing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, the reason why is because like this Gatsby CLI version could be installed on the machine. Say we're say that they have Gatsby CLI 1.2. That's technically can fire into any version of Gatsby inside of a project. Um, and that's like why it's set up this way. So that way like you don't have to update if you've got Gatsby CLI, you can just like it should technically keep working with like the updated versions of Gatsby. Um, but it makes it really hard to type because we have to do all this like dynamic requiring and like falling back and stuff. Um, yeah, as far as that one goes, just like, I don't know. I think that like it would require us to basically rework how Gatsby CLI works to get this like into a more type secure way. Um, that might not like, it's probably not worth the effort and maybe it's something we would do later on, but definitely not for this pull request is it worth the effort. Uh, like that's probably gonna include like a breaking change. Um, to make it so that way like the CLI part is more in Gatsby and like the CLI doesn't do all this logic. So um, yeah, I would say as far as the way you have it right now, of like just like handling like a dynamic require and just saying it's an any is probably as far as we're gonna get. The other, the other thing is like when you're writing typed code, you're kind of like typing things so that way like when you use some variable or object downstream. Sorry, a bunch of cables just fell under my desk. Um, when you're using like an object or something downstream, like you know like what it is and like what its parameters are and those things. Like this file is relatively self-contained. Like I don't think we pass these like handlers any further down into different files. Like uh, the the type security that we're going to get from like refactoring this um, isn't that large. So I don't think that it's really worth our like worth anyone's time to like try and make this like super type secure for as far as it goes to like how Gatsby CLI calls into Gatsby's commands. Yeah, I think that that's probably just what it is. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. And um, um, I've actually i I really wanted to um, make this part a bit, a bit uh, you know, more type safe. Uh, so in case you, you know, change one of the options and you still have to use it here. Uh, but you know, if this code, it doesn't know that it was supposed to get, you know, uh, for example, I changed like GraphQL tracing to GraphQL trace and, uh, nothing changes. Uh, so you might still refer it in a, in a handler, but it's going to break and, uh, uh, I mean, 
you should have tests obviously, but uh, in terms of uh, the compiler will be, it will be fine. Yeah, that's actually a really interesting point. Um, so there's kind of like, an, like a complicated part here to this too. So yeah, I like this example of like you change WebQL tracing to trace. So the thing is, um, let's say that you do that and you submit it and you put it up and now you have a Gatsby CLI 1.3. Uh, if somebody like installs that Gatsby CLI and tries to run against an old version of Gatsby, the CLI will suggest like that the option is GraphQL dash trace, but the old version of Gatsby is built against GraphQL dash tracing. So like basically the code as is today can't really be like type secure because we're living in two different packages that could be different versions on the on the user's computer. So yeah, this is uh, yeah. poor design maybe, <laughs> or just something that we need to like improve. Yeah, good, good, good call out, but yeah, I don't think there's like a way that we can really, we can make it like type safe for like what exists, but it's still gonna like lead to bugs what happens yeah one of uh, you know like more basic problems that we can think about is actually this get commands yeah, yeah I like uh, that. so yeah, I'll here I get private go ahead uh so i guess this this function is it handles error errors uh, from pretty much all the, all the chain, all those commands we defined and uh, all the handlers. And um, I wasn't quite able to figure out a way, you know, to work around this. Maybe, maybe you have some ideas. Okay, so the problem here you're saying is that git commands is not part of like their public API typing sense like so i mean so it exists as a function right because we can call it yeah it does something. yeah we can actually see the docs so i have them open right here yeah sweet and yeah if you search for get you can only it's only get completion but no get commands so it's not even in the docs so it gets it, I guess it's a really private API. I was thinking that, uh, you know, type devs are kind of outdated, but it looks like it's, it's really, it, it's really shouldn't be used by consumers. Interesting. Okay. It doesn't seem like a, a major problem because maybe, um, I mean, it's, it's only going to be a problem if, uh, you know, this internal API changes, which is bad, but if we can not, you know, work out a solution, um, it's not completely bad. Maybe if, you know, uh, it was recently updated. So, uh, uh, Gatsby used to have version 12 of Yarks and now it's version 15 and it's still there. So unless, uh, you know, the Yarks, uh, maintainers, you know, have some huge changes in mind, it's still going to work, but it's not really, you can't be, you can't be sure about it. So at some point you might not be able to update to a newer version and yeah you're still going to have to face this problem. Um, cool. Okay. So that's, uh, it's kind of a couple ways we can work around the, around this, I suppose. Um, so yeah, we can either just like TS ignore this and just like accept that this might break later on and then we'll deal with it then. Um, I think like another way that you could a bit more safely ignore it is you, like, I was going to see if the, do you know that argv in interface? But Yarg, is that argv? Is that an interface type or is that like, um, I want you to look into that. Uh, cool. This one. Yeah. So cool thing you can do with TypeScript is you can actually extend interfaces just by declaring the same interface name again. And like oh, yeah. TypeScript will like merge them. So we could just like at the top of this file, like do interface Yarg, that argv, uh, and then add the git commands. And then like, <laughs> at least it'll work. Um, 
namespace arg the args and then inside that try to do the argv thing. Um, yeah, so you mean something like uh, uh, but because we have this namespace, uh, I think it's not going to work. So you just have to wrap it in a namespace. Yeah, so can do that. it's not going to work. Uh, we can actually import it separately. So do something like this. And uh, now we can probably extend it. Yeah, get commands. Is that working though? Because it's giving the squiggly lines. I can't tell. Uh, not sure. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to do this and see. I don't usually do wow. this because yeah. it's kind of. Ah, so it, it, it needs type argument, yeah. Um, oh, now it's never used. So I think it's just down below, you just didn't, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm going to close this uh, comparison. I'm just going to open like normal file. Cool. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, we use it here, for example, and uh, and because I gave it type argument, maybe we can go without it and see if. Yeah, I think you have to add the, yeah, this is like the conflict. So you have to have like the type argument there. Um, mm -hmm. You would just keep, like, I think you deleted the type of argument that was on build local command. So if you bring that back, that probably should work. But here it's um, it's uh, like optional. So oh, cool. Uh, I can ignore that for now, I guess. Maybe yeah, but here it works. So. And if we change it here, hmm. oh yes. So I guess this fail fail function, um, it already guesses that it, uh, it should receive yargs, which is different right now. Okay. So it's a type from this package. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, I wish there was. Uh, the, I like flow because the flow has like the star uh, operator, which is like basically the same as like not doing anything. Um, <laughs> but at least there's a, something there that shows you that there's uh, it's intentionally. Like, so here, yeah. I, I think it's actually did a great job because uh, if you look closely, um, it has this enable disable. Uh, and it looks like it picks up picks up uh, these options, which we defined to boolean options. And uh, here, this fail handler, it's, it knows that it's supposed to have. So I can do like yards uh, enable now. Well, I guess not. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Uh, well, so either way, I mean, doing this like you, you're right in saying that like doing this git commands approach of extending it is still just like fragile. Like, if somebody thinks something's not um, meant to be public, then you have no way to know that they're gonna keep it around. Yeah. I'm just trying to look through there, like um, the repo right now to see if like anyone else. For this. Actually, you know what? Something cool. Uh, so, Yargs actually has a recommend commands function. 
And so if I if we look at the code that we're doing here, basically I think we're just trying to re rebuild that. Okay. So maybe we can just call yards that recommend commands and just test that out and see if it works. So recommends. Oh, I see. It's uh, recommend commands. Yeah. Um, the, the, do the documentation on it is pretty light, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's kind of hard to see. Um, uh, I found a, the pull request for it. Um, I don't know how to send it to you, though. So I guess what um, what you're suggesting is like we can basically replace this with this, and it's still gonna do the same thing. Yeah, I think so. Um, we need to test it out to see. I mean, like, there's maybe some functional difference here because we have like this CLI that show help, and it's like one yeah, quarter instead, maybe. It's definitely gonna change like the visible behavior, so it might, you know, accomplish the same thing, but it's gonna look different for sure. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna break some uh, tests. Uh, well, that'd be a good way to know if it's safe, it's safe to do or not. Um, I think we, tr we try it out and like see what happens. Like, did you, did you have a local setup where you could like run this as a CLI command? Um, so, well, let's see. Um, you mean this tool like um, Gatsby Dev CLI? Uh, like, can you run the get like the CLI code? from your command. Um, <laughs> obviously, I can build it. Uh, so I can just see into this package and uh, we'll just build this. Yeah, if do that, and then I think if we just use node, we can probably invoke it. OK, so. And um, so it here it's a lib slash index. Okay. Try, so try like typing uh, like nice. Try spelling like misspelling develop and see like what it does. Uh, so looks like it works. Okay, so so I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna test on my screen what like the default behavior is. Uh, I can get. This previous previous function back, and uh, you know we can actually write this output into a file. So I'm going to compile the previous version and compare the output. I like it. And I'm going to try to. And open it. And so here it's the original output. And um, yeah, I think it's the same. Yeah, it's the other one. I'm going to try to compare it. Um, changed. It looks like it's identical. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. I think that's probably safe to go with. <laughs> it's kind it's of amazing. Than having to rebuild that. Yeah, yeah. 
might be able to delete some other code then. Um, yeah, it's actually, it actually means we can uh, do this. We should also look, um, uh, we have a couple of things we should address, I guess. So here we have a couple of side effects in this function. I see report log. So if we replace the, this fail handler uh, with just recommend commands, uh, we're going to lose this two things. Yeah, it so seems like I this fail handler might be doing like two things. It's like it, it catches like misspellings, but it also might be like, uh, does fail catch like if a command throws? You know what I'm saying? Like that message string might be like just like the output from some internal handler. Is my guess. Um, I about how to like reproduce this. Uh, Hmm. Actually, try and run um, the like CLI and don't misspell develop. It should fail because you don't have a Gatsby project here. Yeah. So you get that error. Gatsby develop can drum site. So now try and uh, comment out all this fail stuff and rebuild. I'm curious if like this is like what's doing that logging or not. Mm. No, it's still there. documentation for fail it might tell us a little bit more what it does functions called a failure message that would have been printed okay so I think it well I think I I think I think it is what I was kind of getting at but maybe I our test case wasn't right I think that the fail function is called and like a chat, like a handler throws, but I don't know if we have anything that throws. Um, oh, actually, I know what it is. Um, maybe if, um, if you go to your uh, uh, go to that handler p function and just change that to like a promise that reject, um, mm -hmm. or somehow make that like throw reject, that might allow us so to here. Do. Yeah, changing this to reject. Yes, uh, I think that will work. That works. Okay. And uh, we're on develop command again. Yeah. And I'm going to remove this. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Are we still called this? I think it's called a run resolve local command. Um, like that, like string that's being logged. I just want to find a way to like reproduce this really quick. Okay, but maybe we should that back to resolve just to make that happy. And then uh, in the resolve local command function where it does the report.panic and it prints that line, 
and we just like throw an error right above it so that way so inside of resolve local command function so uh here we'll um i mean here right not that one no it's a different function it's down below it's called resolve local command line 56. Ah, before, here uh no i mean where, wherever i just i'm trying to just find a way to like make this like um reproduce easily yeah we could try that Okay. Uh, okay. And then what is our, which, which version of the code was this? Do we have the thing commented out at the bottom? Or is it with our fail function? Okay, so we have this commented out. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So let's, uh, let's add this back and see what happens. <laughs> um, let's go a closer. So handlers call handler p. They call get handle get command handler. Oh, I think I know what's happening. Um, okay, let's. Uh, this is annoying. How do you get this to work? Okay. So go and ch delete your throw handle at the throw air at the top. Um, I know where you have to put it. Uh, put it in line uh, 101 instead. Uh, here? Uh, 101, like inside of that child function. Yeah. I'm going to exit Zen mode so I can see the line numbers. 101. Yes. Um, so, like here. Right, yeah, here, here's a different. Uh, go to like 105. Here. Uh, yeah. Like this function. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's like, and yeah, we were, we were basically throwing like on the startup. This okay. actually gets called like when a handler gets invoked. Okay, I see. Maybe put a message in there too, just so like we can see if it's like lining up correctly. Uh, and then I think you also missed uh, one thing we have to do up top. Um, I think we need to return that handler. The promise. I think before it was, wasn't it? Was that wrapped in the the brackets before, or was that the promise returned directly? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it it was a return. Okay, so, no, oh, you're right, you're no, right, you're it, right. it used to be like this. Yeah. Cool. Okay, let's test this. Uh, it's still on card. Is this with our fail function at the bottom? Yep. Oh, maybe I haven't saved the, saved the file. Just a moment. <laughs> no, it's still, it's still the same. I guess I don't know. Um, maybe we, we don't use this fail thing. I would say I, I probably need to like spend some time following up on this. Um, we probably don't have to like spend all of our time looking into that. Uh, let's just like let's follow up. Uh, maybe maybe we should you know run the test suite and see if uh, 
if it still works without it. Maybe there yeah. are some specific tests that can help us understand this. That's not a great idea. I'm going to change it here and uh, remove some. And we should see if it's even used anywhere else. Yeah, I just checked it's not. We we apparently have a copy of it in. Oh, you're searching. You're only looking in the www folder. If that file. Oh yeah. Included. Yeah. Yes. So we have a copy of it in Gatsby apparently, but it's a different file. Yeah. So it's not the same thing, and yeah, uh, yeah. here's just. And it's also somewhere in the docs. Oh, it's a, it's like a change log or not? Uh, CLI redesign. Oh, this is an RFC. So we probably, probably have to worry about that. It's just an RFC. That's... OK, it's OK. Yeah. So I guess we should maybe remove this file completely if it's. Uh, I agree. If it's not used anymore. Sorry to whoever uh, did the work of transferring that file to <laughs> TypeScript. Um, so I guess we're fine, and uh, we can build this again. Yeah. Sorry to Michael De Boye. Don't know if he said, said his name right. Mm. Okay, looks fine. So let's try to test this. Oh, nice. We have an error. Just one. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere. Two minutes. Maybe it's some of my like fake types placeholders. Oh yeah, you did have that like, oh my God, what is this type? Oh yeah, right. All right, that one. Yeah. Yeah, so that's an interesting one. Um, so honestly, again, for like that, I, I, I don't like doing these like any's. Uh, I think that like your code base should have its none if possible. This is one of the mm -hmm. situations where like our like correlation between this file and actually Gatsby does not is not like one to one. So I don't know how to like safely type this. Or if there's even a benefit to pretending you're safely typing it. Yes, because this command is uh, it's basically any because we required it. We use dynamic require. No, it's still there. This error. It's weird. Okay. Uh it's kind of pointless to type the arguments because you don't know what kind of parameters the functions have. So it's no use typing the arguments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just put um, unknown. Yeah, so Go you ahead. think we should do. Something like this here. Yeah. And uh, well, here we know that it's a function. Yeah. Um, wonder what the problem is with this code. Um, interesting. Oh, it's your, your oh, it's my files. Oh, yeah, right. You made it a TypeScript JavaScript file. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to just delete them. <laughs> yeah. I saw that Musha just suggested there's a show, show help on fail method. 
from yargs. By default yargs, I'll put a usage string if any error is detected. Use the show help on fail. I have to customize this behavior. That may be interesting because I think in our fail command, we were calling CLI.show help. So maybe if we end up finding that we can get rid of this fail message, maybe that's something we should add on to it. I think show show help is is basically just what it does anyway. Um, thanks, Misha, for that recommendation. What concerns me actually is. Um, is that we used to have this to report logs. Yeah. Um, I have to look at how Yargs does it, but if they print to the console log, so if they print to like standard, standard out, then we have a problem. If they use like console.log, we're actually okay because the reporter hijacks console.log. So anything that gets okay. like console.log like actually goes to the reporter. Um, so, yeah, we have to look at yards to like see what they're like, how they print things. We'll try and look that up. So looks like um, I just look at yard, yards. They just uh, yeah, they print things with council, so uh, we won't lose any functionality with that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so the tests still work well, and um, sweet. So far, I don't see any problem. Yeah, I think that's probably gonna work out too. Um, let's, let, let's push this. Like, I, I want to like pull this down and like test it locally a few times, just to see if I can find oh, yeah. edge cases. Um, sure. Um, so I think, here, I think that'll, be, that'll work out well. I'm gonna just remove my comments real quick, and. Uh, Here it's um, it looks fine. So I think this message will kind of do, do well. Yeah. And I'm going to push it. Sweet. Um, was there any other like uh, things that we missed? I'm not sure we got it all, but I think that like that was most of them. We had the list up top, right? So we might want to have um, 
some of these functions, uh, some of these handlers, they'll have uh, no types here. And um, it's kind of a weird type that it inferred. So it should be, it should be like related to this portion right here. So here we're using clipboard. Um, yeah. It, but it for some reason. Because like, so the, those args that come through there, like when it, act, when it could actually run, the args actually are just what comes through the command line. Um, so the user fully defines what those args are when they run a command. Oh, yeah. So I think that's why they have to have like that, um, that, that index property. Yeah, like you can't actually like fully depend on args that clipboard existing. Oh, yeah. So I see if it, um, maybe it's like this type. So we can just see it here. Okay. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. Uh, it's the same type. Yeah. Nice. Oh, it looks like that actually accepted a generic where you can like pass it the properties that you expected, but it's up to you if you want to do that. I don't think we get like gain that much by adding those things. Um, yeah, it's, uh, oh, and uh, we have um, functions like this, this one. So here it's, uh, it's more like unknown. Yeah. Like it, like it could be known, but I don't think, it, like it's not worth our time to make it known, honestly. Um, uh, but I think it's, uh, it's also the arguments because it's it's basically the same case as here. Yeah. Yeah, let's so, just do that everywhere. Yeah, let's just that. Yeah. Saw one where you called like yards at arguments and gave it uh, an any as a property. I think we can get rid of Okay. So here we actually use destructuring. So yeah but probably is like possible to fail i mean it's experimental api i know that our team's like iterating on that a lot right now so uh you could probably still assign like the yards arguments to the object itself mm, yeah it should work because it has like that index property maybe it doesn't oh not or not oh it's because Yeah, let's uh, let's let's add some wrapper code around this. Um, I would say just uh, before we call recipes handler, we should probably just like check to see if the recipe and the string if it exists. Or, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that okay. it seems like this could probably fail if like you just called Gatsby recipes when it didn't pass anything. Oh, okay, here it is. Let's, uh, let's, let's do Yeah, no, it's fine. Better. Well, let's change this to uh, does not equal string and throw an error. Oh, yeah. So that way the user gets um, something out of it. So. Mm -hmm. Take inspiration from other errors around here. Um, looks like maybe we just like put 
the word air colon and then like a message like Caspian recipes must be called with a specific recipe. Uh, can you give me an ah oh, like this, you man? Yeah, it probably is like council log it. Going. So we can do just like this. Um, I put uh, Gatsby recipes needs to be called with a specific recipe. Um, um, <laughs> probably, yeah. Um, I, I would have struggled to spell that too. <laughs> needs to be called uh, with a specific recipe. Maybe that's not great. Uh, that's fine for now, man. If you have a better idea, <laughs> we are actually at time, y'all. Uh, it's oh, been a yeah. good one-hour stream. I think that we touched on a lot of difficult topics. Uh, that was awesome. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, difficult for sure. Um, so, thank you for taking the time to to pair. And uh, extra thanks to our captioner for your providing live captions, which is amazing. Yes, thank you so much. And also we're gonna have another uh, pairing session tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Um, and I believe we'll be looking at an issue with the uh, Gatsby Drupal thing. Yes. So, yeah. So thank you all for joining. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Blaine. Thank you, Madeline. We'll see you soon. Cool. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Hopefully it was useful. Oh, yeah. So.